Hey there, how are we all doing? I had a little time here, so I thought I'd finally put together this video. Probably a couple weeks ago I got these completer coins in the mail, and uh, they're pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed, although some of them are a little bit beat up. And uh, that's pretty common with the Royal Mint. Look at the Queen's face on this one. So there's some scratches and dings, but some milk spotting. You know, nothing major, but little milk spotting dots here and there. The reverse on that one looks good, but really glad I got these. Uh, you know, they first kind of came out maybe a couple months ago. I don't know, maybe around April or May, the design and originally when that happened, you know, they were being kind of showcased as a proof coin. So there was some speculation whether they'd come out with the you know, the BU kind of bullion series version. And uh I loved it and I thought it would be a slam dunk, but it was unclear for a little while if they were gonna offer it in the bullion form. You know, the proof collectors all liked it. But uh I'm happy they did. And uh yeah, so I decided to bring out all my Queen's Beast coins in there there in the background. So we'll look at those in a minute, take a look at the series. I was gonna say uh also I don't remember exactly the order they all came out in. But I wonder if the the key the Rosetta Stone, if you will. I wonder if it showcases the order they came out in on the completer coin, does it? I was trying to determine that, but frankly, I don't exactly remember myself. Although it looks like it could be, because I remember, you know, at the top, you had the, the lion, that was the first one. And then it shows a dragon and uh, the griffin which that could be uh, switched around, I'm not sure. I, I, well, we'll assume that's correct. And then the unicorn, the, the bull, the falcon. I can't remember the name of that um, goat thing. It had a funny name. It's actually one of my favorite characters on here, just because it looks kind of evil. It's got like these warts on it and boils and Try to remember what they call it. And then there was another lion, and then there was like a stallion, and perhaps the dog. I remember a lot of these animals are very dull. You know, com compared to some fighting lion or a dragon, a griffin, a un even the unicorn's a little dull. But when you just have a horse and a dog, like they don't really fit into the the uh, pantheon or. Yeah, anyways, let's, uh, so I got a, quite a few of these. They had a pretty good deal. You know, silver prices have been quite elevated, but JM Bullion had them pretty cheap, so I jumped on it. I forget how many I got. It was probably around 20 ounces or something. Actually, all those in the background, these are all the completer coins. Now, like I said, these ones, I can't remember if they came separate. Most of the ones in the flips show milk spotting. I wonder if we can see. That one's just damaged on her face. See this one. Mm -hmm. There's a little milk spot on the paw of that lion. Do you guys enjoy this or is this a, vo a boring video when you look for milk spots? I don't see any there. Maybe they're on the reverse. Uh, that one's not bad, I think. Hmm. Anyways, let's stop hunting for milk spots. A lot of these coins will have milk spots. Really luck of the draw. If I didn't mention before, if you lived in the UK, this would be an amazing coin to stack because I don't know exactly how their uh, uh, tax system works, but my understanding any denominated, you know, government coin says like five pounds are tax exempt. 
So I know they have a lot of taxes over there. You know, VAT taxes, but also when you sell income taxes, assuming you make money. All right, let's uh, let's use our knowledge of that order. Let's try to remember what order they came out in here. We've got the key. Let's take a look here. All right, so this was number one. And somehow I heard about these. They weren't widely publicized at the time. <coughs> I saw it on like SD Bullion, I think. I was like, what the heck is that? Looks awesome. The designer of all these, I believe, is Jody Clark, which I thought was a woman. But apparently that was a dude's name, Jody. And uh, he makes, he des has designed almost all the UK coins, quite a few. Prolific designer, very much so. They're all pretty good. Looks, look at that. He also designed the obverse. He's like their only designer in studio. Here in the U.S., we got all these different designers and they're trying to be all politically correct, trying to choose people to design coins. Sometimes if you have a good engraver, it's like if you have Elvis in the band, just let him sing. If you got Jody Clark designing the coins, just let him do it. You don't need anyone else. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you don't need to spread the love around. But anyways, that was number one. Really nice. Oop, it's Oh, they are labeled the Lion of England. Okay, cool. Now, referring to our rubric, just to double check here, was the, uh, the dragon next. Okay, we got the rubric. Uh, the red dragon of Wales is super cool. Super cool. The Welsh, the Welsh people, 2017. Now the other one came out in 2016. I think these dropped about every two month, every six months or so. They might have come out with a new one. Now look here also. This was back when they had kind of the orange peel texture. Which was kind of cool. I don't mind it. It's like the old school look on the old Britannia's had that. Uh, shortly after they were getting that different kind of mesh fence design. Alright, so that's number two. Now number three should be this one. The Griffin of Edward the Third. Edward the Third. Not sure when Edward the Third was king. That could have been a long time ago. Twenty seventeen. There's a nice detail on it actually on the bottom. My camera will do justice. I don't know what that is. Some kind of building a turret or a tower. Pretty cool. I also like the design language how a lot of the wings or the animal they go beyond like the borders now here you can also see that chain link very cool chain link I don't know if the other creatures had it previous now we still have the kind of orange peel texture which is nice I guess the line and stuff had that chain link too just going back to look all right next up was the oh gosh Looks like the unicorn, huh? The unicorn on the bowl. Oh yeah, the unicorn of Scotland. Pretty cool. There's a brand of dart boards, I think, unicorn. Uh, speaking of darts, I don't know too much about it, but I know it's very popular in British pubs. There and in the Netherlands, they really get into their dart matches. Pretty cool sport for the pubs. This is a 2018. Again, all these made by Jody Clark. Yeah, this one I did find a little bit boring. I mean, it is kind of cool, that big chain. Hang around his neck. Some of it just feels kind of washed out, though. Like, it's all these are a little too shiny for my taste, to be honest. Like, the does the design on his head. It's all just kind of like a blur. Pretty cool. And you still have the lion down the shield. Now, sometimes they call those leopards, but 
I mean, those are medieval type designs, and uh, back in the 1200s, 1300s, 1400s, most people hadn't seen a lion or a leopard, so they would just go by the pictures they might have seen in some old book. Did they have books back then, or were they called something else? I don't know. Oh, we gotta refer to her. No, the bull was next. Where's the bull? Bull Clarence? Oh, we're at 10 minutes. Bull of Clarence. Pretty cool. This one's cool, I think. If you're a silver bull. Looks pretty nice. We got the shield. It's got the uh, fleur-de-lis. Because they thought they were the king of France. Like Edward the Lionheart. I was trying to think. Uh, yeah, there's some old coins I was looking at, actually. Like Henry VIII. And if you look on the legends of the coin with the wording, it would say... It's all in Latin. But you know how they say, like, Regina, Anglia. Well, some of those would also say, like, King of France. So... See if I can find some of that stuff in a minute, but all right, what's next? Um, let's see, bull, uh, bird, and then the weird thing. We'll figure out what that's called in a minute here. Uh, bird, the falchion. So it's the falcon of the plantagenets. Plantagenets, that's a tough word. I forget exactly the Plantagenets. I saw some documentary. I think it was around the time of Edward the Lionheart. Maybe a little bit after him, some of those descendants. And I think it was like some kind of plant. Isn't that funny? He has plant in the word Plantagenets. But uh, and it was like from France. Yeah. Anyways, pretty cool. It's actually one of my favorite. Some people didn't like this one. I don't know why. I remember what, there was some controversy when it first came out. Some people said it looked like a Nazi eagle. Hmm. I mean, people get bent out of shape. Eagles have been used as symbols for almost every country in the world. So, it's just a badass looking creature. This is a falcon though. Uh, the eye looks pretty... I think other people were, like, questioning the eye at one point, too. But we've all seen the new gold American Eagle, and the eyes on that thing are really bizarre. A lot of uh, adjectives used to describe those eyes. Uh, what was after? Oh, the weird creature. We're going to figure out what it's called. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's the Yale. I'll have to look up if the Yale College was related to the Yale mythological beast. Now you have the portcullis. Some of you might know what that is. It's also featured on the British Penny, I believe, the new Penny. 2019, the Yale of Beaufort. Some would say Beaufort. I think it's Beaufort. It's probably French. I really like this one. Kind of looks satanic. When you think it's got like tusks. Again, I think it's some kind of mythological beast. Although a lot of these are kind of like sigils. If you're into Game of Thrones, I think a lot of these are like house sigils, banners, the bannermen. Yeah, I was kind of Game of Thrones all of a sudden. But uh, yeah, maybe some house had this thing. Anyways, looks like a, uh, a goat, really crazy horns, tusks, and they just threw in like the boils or warts for good measure, and the tail, also the, uh, it's got like a tail of a lion, big goatee on him, nice. Alright, I forget what's next. Mm -hmm. What was next? Oh, we got another lion, a horse dog, another lion, oh, this one, 
some of these took me a while to jump on. Kind of lost interest in the series, then I came back trying to pick up some of the older ones. I don't like to pay any sort of real premiums on them either. Just slight, you know, just regular kind of premium bullion. At one point, like the lions and the dragons and the griffin had a pretty decent premium, but I mean, they made a ton of these and they're just bullion. White lion and Mortimer. It's got a cool sun. I guess you'd call it a radiant sun with a what appears to be like a Tudor rose. It was interesting. I can I don't know much about British history, but I know there was like a War of the Roses, and uh, but the houses came together. I think around Henry Tudor, uh, which encompassed the. Uh, I guess it was the white rose and the red rose, and they put them together. Four fine silver. Uh, on the back, you can see the uh, last couple of years probably, they started incorporating, I believe it's called like a gouache pattern. And I guess it kind of prevents counterfeiting maybe somewhat. Anyway, these are kind of cool, five pound denomination. Oh god, I already forgot what's next. Can I guess? I think it was the horse. We're just going to go with that. Oh, and now we have the white horse of Hanover. Now that's interesting. Some of you may not know, Hanover is, I believe, part of Germany. And you also may not know that a lot of these kings were from that region because of royal ties, royal houses. Marriage, of course, trying to strengthen your realm with allies. And um, one of the most famous was actually King George III, who we fought the American Revolution against. I'd have to research it, but I think him or maybe his father was more fluent probably in German than English. He was really like a foreigner on the throne. Kind of crazy, kind of crazy when you think of it. But they were from Germany and kind of makes sense why during the revolution they had Hessian soldiers. Now they were famous mercenaries, but I mean the king was from Hanover, Germany himself. Don't quote me on it, you have to look it up, see where he was born. And lastly, is this really the last one? Fitting that the last one was just a humble uh, humble Xi'an. Another white animal, that's funny. The white greyhound of Richmond. I feel like greyhounds are usually gray. But anyways, got another Tudor Rose. Pretty cool. Was that the last one? Let's refer to our key. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, I got quite a few of these. They're great coins. Just wanted to do a, a little display. And uh, here they are in all their glory. Nice little collection of them. Wow. I wonder how many there were? I'm not sure. Let's see. More than I thought. Oop. I think that was all of them right there. So, let's see. Uh, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Okay, so it's an even number. Eleven in the middle. Topped off by this number 11, this very nice completer coin. Really like it. I do like it. They do have milk spotting and whatnot, but this is really cool. Really cool. I dig it. If you guys like it, did you complete the series? Do you hope that they're going to come out with other similar series? Yeah, I wish her well. I don't hope she dies, but I do want to see a new face on this coin soon. All right. Have a good one.